In amongst all of the new features in DaVinci Resolve, they've added the Magic Mask 2. They have made it just that little bit better. When I say a little, I mean quite a bit. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to use the new Magic Mask. My name's Dan, you're watching DaVinci, and let's look at the Magic Mask 2. So I'm gonna use a shot of my dog, Poppy. She's very sweet. So to access the new version of the Magic Mask, you want to jump into the color tab. Unfortunately, I don't think they've actually added Magic Mask 2 to Fusion. I think the reason is, is just because it's new and I'm sure they will add it, but for now it's in the color page. So let's jump into the color page and take a look at this. So for those of you who have never used the Magic Mask before in the color page, if you go down to this little tab here, this has got a little person, then this right here is the Magic Mask. And as you can see, it just says, AI and Magic Mask 2. I love the fact that they called it Magic Mask 2. It's just like, just funny really. Now within this central tab, we have the controls on the right and our play track buttons here in the center. Whenever we create a stroke or a dot, in this case, you'll see later on, our information will appear here, creating a little mini timeline. Let's first select our subject. So in our case, it's the dog. So what we're gonna do is just make sure we've got this little guy here selected. And then we're just going to click, create a little blue dot. And if you're following along at home, you might be confused that there is just a blue dot on your subject now and nothing has actually happened. What do I do? Well, so there's actually two ways of actually viewing what the Magic Mask is actually doing. The first way is like this little red overlay. So if you go over here and toggle on the mask overlay, the other way to see what your mask is actually doing is this little button in the top left corner. This basically removes anything that the Magic Mask hasn't selected. And look at how brilliant this is. Before Magic Mask 2, it was already fantastic, but they've just gone and leveled it up even further. <laughs> I'm actually lost for words. Like if you zoom in, you can see even the hairs, if we just select this guy, it's cut out in between the hairs. And yes, the original Magic Mask used to be able to do this to some extent, but this is faster and I believe more precise. But I'll be honest, it's a little bit unstable still. It was very unstable in the beta, arguably unusable. Yeah, but really it's it's absolutely fine. Now there are some errors here. So as you can see down here, it's not recognized that that's lawn. It's not been able to distinguish between the lawn and my, my dog's legs. But now in the new update of DaVinci Resolve, we can edit this. A new feature in the Magic Mask 2 that the original Magic Mask couldn't do is being able to edit the mask after the fact, after it's been tracked. But we'll discuss this later and I'll show you later. So forget what I just said. What did you just say? So the best way to track now is to go over to these little track buttons as I said earlier click the double arrow or track forward or track backwards and then this little panel will come up and just be patient it'll do its thing like this looks very happy there so now our timeline down here will go from red to blue and we've now tracked out our dog so as you can see it's fantastic we now have a little dog with it's time for sponsor time Thank you so much to Motion VFX for sponsoring today's video. It feels really nice to be supported by some really lovely brands, especially ones like Motion VFX. And I've actually worked with Motion VFX before and I've had some fantastic hands-on experience using some of their product offerings. That's why I genuinely feel confident in saying and recommending that you check out Motion VFX for your content and your projects. And it's not just DaVinci Resolve plugins that they provide. They do an assortment of various plugins for Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and even after after effects. They have this M installer, which I really, really like. You're able to see exactly what plugins are out there. When you download a plugin from Motion VFX, it will literally just appear in the effects page. All of the graphics transitions are fully customizable in DaVinci Resolve. They also have various plugins from massive creators. I hope to one day have one of my own. Motion VFX are a fantastic source for your plugins. So go check them out in the description below. Time to continue with the video. I believe it has missed a collar. And this is where it gets a bit flickery, but we can repair this. So let's repair this section here and add the collar back. So what you can do is you can go into this little brush add tool here and you can actually, you can change the size of it just here. And we can just add the name tag like that. Now, unfortunately you have to do this frame by frame, sort of defeating the purpose of an AI mask, but it really, really is a step in the right direction. Now, unfortunately, I think as far as I'm aware, there's not a great deal of controls for this brush. As 
in that is the controls, the size. You can't do anything else. And what I mean by that is you can't customize the softness of the brush or the shape of the brush and all of that jazz. There is still room for improvement, but I'm not going to complain to Blackmagic that it is witchcraft, quite literally witchcraft what they're doing with this. If I'd had this when I was like a teenager making my first ever edits, my mind would have melted. Now, if you want to cut out your subject and see that cut out on your edit timeline, just go over to your note tree over here, right click, click add alpha output, and then drag the blue box over to the blue output just there. Then what will happen is when you jump back into your edit page, you'll have a dog in the dark. And of course, any clips you put underneath your edited magic mask shot, you should clearly see the alpha channel working its magic. If not, just make sure your magic mask has the alpha output connected to your relevant node. But what if for whatever reason, the magic mask two isn't working for you? You don't like it and it's just a bit rubbish, which by the way, shouldn't be the case because it's just awesome. So I've got another video of another dog called Sophie, who's actually Poppy's mum, fun fact. So what we're gonna do is cut her out using the original magic mask. So what we can do is go over to our magic mask panel just down here. And what we can do is go over to the three dots here and then scroll down to legacy object mask. There we go. And then we can just click better and you'll see we have less controls here and just click the plus and we can just draw a line instead of the dot selection like with the new magic mask too. And then you just do the same thing again, drag it through. And you can see that is still very good. And I find that the magic mask two is a bit more demanding on my computer. So sometimes when I'm in a rush, I do opt to go back to the original, but it's up to your personal preference on which one you use on a regular basis. On your screen now, I'll put a side by side of the output created by the Magic Mask 2 and the original Magic Mask using the exact same shot. So you can see exactly what's been improved about this or whether it's just exactly the same as before. And that is basically it. I'm not gonna go into crazy detail on the Magic Mask, but let me know your thoughts. Is this an improvement? All those years ago, the Magic Mask tutorial was the first ever video I posted on this channel. So revisiting this is actually a bit of a blast from the past. Anyway, guys, my name's Dan. You've watched Dan Vinci. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.